Here we are again. What are we doing today? Today, we're going to deal finally with this master cylinder. And you see, the only real problem with it is this stupid plastic uh, reservoir is all cracking up. Needs to be replaced. So we're going to take care of that today. Probably since it got shoved in at the assembly line. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to this old stuff. They like sending me. For some reason, you know what? I do end up on a lot of old cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, last weekend or weekend before was a 73 Charger and then a, a 71 Satellite. And it's just like, hey, I know, I know exactly who to send for that one. Well... I'm good with it though. I'd rather work on that than the new. That's well, and you, and you have you have to wonder because you take a. I mean, even in this car, you t you take it into you know the average you know Joe Blow brake shop or whatever, and they're like, oh, okay, maybe I don't know, no, eight hundred dollars. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> no. And but I don't you know. get that nowadays, man. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, and you know the thing is. Like, you know, you've probably been around, I mean, I saw your body like 30 years in this, right, oh, yeah, at least. Long time. Yeah, like, you've been around long enough to have to learn to actually diagnose and troubleshoot, not just throw parts at it. You well, know, and that's, a lot of the, that's the cross line between uh, a real good experience and a bad one. you got to be real smart. When you own a car, you got to be smart. Mm -hmm. okay. Even if you can't fix it, you still got to know that it's real easy to start throwing parts and mm -hmm. parts and more parts. All of a sudden, your bill comes five grand mm -hmm. or whatever else. Well, that's the way it is out there right now, though. It's yeah. way anyone that has a car will kind of, especially if they've never been raised to actually fix anything. Like, I got a brother in law, that motherfucker. He can't, he can't check his tire pressure. He can't pull his dipstick for a month at a time. I'll go out there, I hear his car. It's like, tack, 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 tack. Open the hood, pull the stick, and there's nothing on it. I'm like, jeez. That's, uh, I'd, I have a few friends that are real techie types, and it's like, they don't know nothing. Oh, I got a new Mustang. Don't mean it's going to fix itself or take care of itself. No, no, that's you why know. I got a new one, because yeah. now <laughs> they don't have to freaking, they got four, three to four years before something starts going wrong, and then they don't. Well, it's just like I had a neighbor who, my neighbor before this one, he had BMWs, right? He had little BMW, you know, like 318 convertibles, whatever it was. Yeah. Not been, yeah. He didn't do anything at car until the light told him to. And it's like, well, BMW says don't do anything until the light comes on. I'm like, you realize they call that an idiot light for a yeah, reason. Light comes on, I think you're too late. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always been my rule. <laughs> that's what they tell you. It's like, yeah. That's why they call it an idiot light. It's not because the light's an idiot. <laughs> but now, I know, it's just, do I don't know. Do well, and the, and the thing is, it seems like the newer cars, the manufacturers, they don't want them to really be worked no. on. No, you know, they're, they're uh, components. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You, you can't fix it. You have, God damn it. There. Well, at least we got most of it. Yeah, that's all right. I didn't think it was going to be a clean job. No. But <laughs> like that, trying to I know. I appreciate that. Just know I'm not going to, you know, we're not in North Scottsdale here. <laughs> so, I know what it takes. I've been under this car enough. I mean, I've done the three water pumps on this thing. That's so. not a pleasant one. Oh, no, that wasn't. Oh, yeah, and two two distributors because, yay, OptiSpark. <laughs> so, yeah, take apart the whole the front of the engine to get a distributor out. I like that idea. That's one thing I like about LS1s, coil packs. Coil I, packs are good. Yeah, that's that's a lot easier to deal with. That's what I liked about the I had a V the Camaro I had was a V6, it was a 3800 series 2. Again, coil packs. Easy. This? Okay, not easy. It's still a distributor and they pack it's like, okay, let's let's find the worst possible place to put a distributor. Well, they pack there's not if you there's not a lot of Oh well. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Thank you. There it is. Oh, a little spurt. Good. No air in there. Oh, we're going to have a little, but that's okay. As well, well, yeah, I mean. The base. There it is again. There it is again. There it is again. See now, when I did the master cylinder on the L, a hell of a time getting that master cylinder bench boy. Well, the damn thing just didn't. For one thing, it was that the piston was stiff as hell. It was like, geez. Let's do. I scare some customers when I show up. <laughs> well, I'll admit. When I mean when Brent showed up in the in the internet ready rent wrench truck, I'm like, okay. So I looked out there, I heard rumble, 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 looked down, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah. But then I saw the compressors and all the stuff said, okay, this guy's real. All right, no problem. No problem. Okay, no problem at all. Yeah. Well, and that's probably because I've what I've researched for what that's worth is that I guess the pistons in the ABS controller keep cycling and they'll let air, constantly let the air in and out, so you're fighting the ABS system. But we haven't drained anything on the lines, okay? So we may have just a spot, but I think I can get that out, so I'm not worried about that. All right. Well, you're, you know, you're the guy who knows. I'm just the guy who's full of supposition. <laughs> like you're I said. the customer, man. That's right. Well, you know, I know. But I want to help because it makes a customer. <laughs> You know what? Uh, they've already they've already done it. Uh, there's only a certain amount of time for this job. Yeah, that's they said uh, two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. If I can't get it right in three, you're still getting two. Which is good. You don't want to. You know, they go by book. Right. Is it still Chilton time, or has it changed? I think it's still that. That's that's like the Bible. Now I've got a book that's about five inches thick, because I, you know, I've been a mobile mechanic, right? And I still fix other customers' cars outside a wrench, mm -hmm. and so I go by that book. That way, they they're not overshocked. If they go online and they look, they'll mm -hmm. see what they're going to pay. Right. Worst thing you could ever be is greedy. Well, I always play a long game, and that's the way I look at it too. I mean, I was. I work for someone else now, but for 15 years, I was a consultant. I was an IT consultant, and I kept my client base low because being in IT, you can't really handle more than three clients at once up by yourself. But I didn't overcharge anybody because I had clients for 12 years. Well, if that's I over, worth gold, man. That, there you go. If, you don't, if I overcharged them, I wouldn't have had them for 12 visits. No. You, so. you, yeah. You'd have short-term customer base, and then that, that'll only last for so long because then the word will get out. Yeah. I haven't seen Brent in a while. It's like we're all so spread out. Well, and like I said, I was looking. I was actually looked him up. The last review I saw on him was like in January. So he's still around. That's what I wonder. He said the, back last year. He said that it was basically 
uh, at that time there was two guys. I guess you might have been one of them. Yeah, I stopped yeah. once and then just got reactivated not too long ago. And he basically did the East Valley and the other guy did the West Valley. But at least that's how it worked out for him. But yeah, Brent was real good too. I mean, oh yeah. It was just like, that's the thing. You got to be able, you gotta be able to, you know, build some trust and have some trust in what people are doing here. And, you know, well, that's the big thing. Trust. Trust is hard. Well, as yeah. some, a lot of these cars we get called out on are mm -hmm. just shot to hell. Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, they are beyond wore out. Yeah. And I don't like those calls because it's hard to explain to someone that, well, you got 300,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. You got oil leaking from every possible point on it. And, yep. and it's like a Kia. Yeah. It's one of the worst cars built anyway. Uh, yes. I'm and not wild about Hyundai's either. It's just really hard to explain to them, well, your car's had it. Mm -hmm. Is it worth the $300 alternator I'm going to put into it? No. no. That's... I don't like those calls. Well, that's, and, well, people don't understand. People don't have enough information to make a good decision. That's the other thing. Because if they did, they wouldn't buy the car. Well, and another know. thing, you got millennials. You got, you know, your real young generations mm -hmm. out there driving. They don't know a damn thing no. about cars. And cars have gotten a lot cheaper since our day. Mm -hmm. And good luck. That's, Junk, that, junkyards are full of little Hondas and everything else. Yes. I know, it's scary, because that's when I, where I work, I've got, it's funny, because I've got half the people are collecting Social Security, and the other half just got out of college. Oh, that's <laughs> such a gap. And, and it's like, yeah, and it, it's an interesting mix, you know, it's funny, but yeah, they don't have a clue. I see these kids driving this, these cars, and I'm just like, oh, it won't start. And it's like, your battery cable's loose. What's yeah, that? They don't, they don't even know what it is. Yeah. It's like, here, I'll come in here and just you know, wrench, wrench, wrench. Just, oh, wow, you're a mechanic. No, I'm just a guy with a wrench. <laughs> See if we got brakes, right? All right. Let me fill her up and uh, pull that pad out, and you pump it up. All righty. And then uh, if it feels soft, we're, at, we're actually going to crack a line anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I just want to make sure. You want it started or just on the I'm just on the brake no, assault? No, we're going to, well, let's do three off non-start and then we'll go to start. Okay. All righty. I don't want to power up the UBS yet. Right. All right. You probably don't have anything. Is it to the floor? I haven't touched it yet. I'm waiting for you to tell me. I don't want to do nothing you don't tell me to do. Go for it. Nothing? I felt a little resistance. Well, that's good. That means we didn't lose everything. Okay, it got harder. Yep, do it again. Do it like three or four times and hold it. Is it staying or is it losing? It's coming back up. Okay, yeah. Do it again until it feels like it's not going to come back up. All right. Yeah, there's definitely resistance there. That's good. That's good. We're way ahead of the eight pole right now. Okay. You hold it? Now I've got it. Yeah, we got some air. That's good, Bill. All right, do it again. All right. It's probably a little weaker. It is. All right, I'm holding it. Again, three or four pumps. Okay, I'm holding it. <laughs> you hear the seat cracking. <laughs> so I guess that's some indication of resistance. Oh, went to the floor. That's good though. I had no air in that line. All right. I'm still holding it. Pump it up again. All right. It should be getting tight. Did it? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Here's the fourth one. I'm holding it. All right. Oh, we're lucky, dude. I don't think you're going to have a problem. All right, we'll pump her up again. Hold it, and then we'll start. Feel good? Nice. 
fourth one, I'm holding it. You can let off. All right. And let me top it, and then we'll start it and do it again. All righty. See where you're set. All right, folks, here's the takeaways. And yeah, that's the first time you've seen my face on this channel. Oh, there it is. Mm. Anyway, the big takeaway from this is that we made this job a lot easier than it could have been, mostly due to the fact that Rick was a very experienced mechanic and he already kind of knew the pitfalls of doing it wrong. Now, the reason why we didn't have to involve a cams tool or, or why this job took about half an hour, really tops, if I wouldn't John, John with him so much, it probably would have went a little faster than what you saw here. But the reason it, didn't, it wasn't such a big deal was that we didn't introduce any air to the system. Now, here's the key things you got to remember when you're doing the master brake cylinder. If you want to go off like this one off, was that you really need... To make sure you don't turn the key on when you're trying to break bleed the the master cylinder when it, once it's installed in the car, because what'll happen is what always happens when you engage that thing it powers up those pistons start moving and all of a sudden if there's any air in the system it's trapped forever, and if you don't have yourself some kind of cam or something to cycle it out you're going to be sitting there for three or four hours, basically fighting the fighting the ABS trying to get the air out of the system. Um, so what we did, it was a sequence, and the last thing you saw was me basically pumping the pedal uh, three, four times, holding it just like the standard brake bleeding procedure, while he cracked the nut on it until the air came out, and we just kept repeating that procedure until it felt right. Now, uh, the one last thing I did was I actually had him jump in the car and feel the brake when it was running, once we were sure we had all the air out of it, and... Uh, you know, let him feel it, because he's the mechanic, he knows how it's supposed to feel. I know what the car feels like, but I wanted him to know what it felt like, you know, and uh, see what he thought of it. You know, he knows how things are supposed to feel. All right, the total breakdown, the cost of this, I bought the, the master cylinder. Now, I, he, now Rick said I could have gotten away with just a reservoir, but I'm looking at it this way. This, this master cylinder had almost 180,000 miles on it as the factory original. And even though it was really the only real problem with it that was exhibiting was the, uh, you know, kind of cracked up uh, uh, a reservoir. Thing is, those seals and all that stuff are just as old. And I could have replaced that reservoir and still had a problem six months down the road. That's what I was really worried about. So we just replaced it, have it new. Cost of the reservoir, about $120. Um, and that was on Amazon. It's a Ray Bestus, so it's the one for this car, and it's a quality part. Uh, the labor here for wrench to come out originally two seventy five. That's what wrench cost. Now Rick's labor rate he works for other people, and it's it's quite a bit less than that. But of course, wrench has got to make some money on this too, and uh, that's fine. So you're talking all to, all told, probably just under four hundred dollars to get this job done with parts. That's pretty much in line with where you're going to get it from any shop. If you can find a shop you can trust that is, and one that actually knows the proper procedure, a, 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 a.k.a. bleed the bench bleed the master cylinder the first, which is common, bleed it again with the key off, then check it with the key on. Now, what we did was we felt the brakes, and it was we made the determination that the brakes felt fine. They felt like they did before. If we did not crack the line after the key was turned because we didn't want to risk introducing air into the line and causing a problem. So we're good. Uh, car drives fine. The only thing I have to watch out for is there may be a bit of a little air bubble that pops up and my fluid level may go down. That's fine. I just got to watch the fluid level for the next day or two. You know, and if I'm just top it off, because the one thing you never want to have in your master cylinder is the fluid uh, reservoir to go and run dry, because then you introduce a bunch of air in the system, then it's a big freaking nightmare. So I'm going to be checking that, you know, probably after t every time we turn it off, I'm going to be popping that lid on the reservoir and making sure that the level is where it needs to be. Form has got a new master cylinder. It's one less thing I'm worried about. So, anyway... So Camino guy, and I'm hoping this was in somewhat useful to you and somewhat helpful. If you try it yourself, remember, big takeaways, it's like any other car. 
any other master cylinder and any other domestic product. Just make sure if when you're done bleeding that you don't turn that key on until you're pretty well confident that the system is bled. Now, if uh, the ABS light would have come on or anything like that, yeah, we would have been sitting here for a long time bleeding the whole system and trying to bleed the ABS system. Um, but we didn't do that, and mostly that's because we followed proper procedure. Anyway, wrench.com, they got good mechanics. We had Brent last time, and now we had Rick. Happy with both of them. I will see you later with more projects. Probably with Rick. I'm out.